Another day and more evidence of the damage caused in areas along the River Shannon. We cannot possibly put up with this any longer. Like. Life downstream of the Partin Weir is becoming increasingly difficult. We just don't know where to start to get back again. Hello and welcome to Ear to the Ground this evening. Well, as these floodwaters finally recede and pull back after weeks and weeks of flooding, here in the Shannon Plains, farmers are facing a very uncertain next few months. Some of them are even questioning if this land is viable in the future for farming at all. Pora Coughlin is a dairy farmer in Kilgarvan Glebe, County Westmeath. Nearly all of his 110 acres have been under floodwaters for the past month. Needless to say, milking his cows has not been easy. How have you managed in the last few weeks? It has been difficult. For the last fortnight, the water has been coming in under the cows. So we pump up the water three and four times a day, just drop it below the slat level and pump it up to the overground tank. Also, at the moment, our baby calf sheds are all flooded, our calving sheds and the dry cattle sheds are all under water for the last three weeks. What happened to the calves? The calves are moved out to a neighbouring farm. There's 15 baby calves, some will be from six weeks down, and um, the dry cattle are all moved to another farm as well. So what you're seeing here is the winter feed, it was supposed to be the winter feed for Pork's cows. Everything submerged, of course, is going to have to be thrown away. But the real question for Pork is going to come when these floodwaters pull back and go away, and he sees the damage to his fields and has to make a decision. Is he going to reseed the fields or is this land no good anymore for farming? We'd be hoping we'd have enough silage to get us into March anyway. But I can't see you having ground that's going to grow grass into May or June even. Will you reseed the whole farm? It's gone to a stage now that we won't reseed at all levels anyway because it's pointless. They will flood every winter. But we don't mind that. We accept the winter floods. But it's the, it's the higher floods that's costing us now. A few miles down the road from Porrick's farm, we abandon our cars and have to travel by tractor to reach Francis Nally's dairy farm. So you can see here, I mean, this is an effective lake that we're driving through. We have to load onto a trailer to get to Francis's farm, which is just over there. It's completely cut off. The milk lorry couldn't come, so he had to dry his cows off. There was no point milking them anymore. This is what he's dealing with. Who knows how he's managing to do it. So Francis, we're walking through your calf shed. Luckily you, you weren't calving when this all this happened. No, we're just three weeks away from starting the calving now. So we're lucky that we, were, we had no stock in this shed. There was only straw and hay stored in it up until the 4th of December. Now, back in 2009, when there were very bad floods, you flooded, it wasn't as bad as this. But what did you do in here in response to that flood? We rose this floor in this shed um, 16 inches, hoping to evade the next flood water. We lifted it uh, with filling and put a, put a new base of concrete back across it all. And um, we're standing in 12, 14 inches of water today. We need the water to subside about two feet in the next three weeks to get us back up running in the yard again. What's your biggest fear? That it won't be gone out of the yard when Gavin starts. As is so often the case, people around Ireland have helped each other to deal with the floods. They've filled sandbags, manned pumps, farmers have used their tractors for transport, and plastic silage covers have doubled up as waterproofing. Neighbours have also taken livestock in from flooded sheds. John Dolan is looking after poor ex calves. Okay. They're in good nick, aren't they? They are. They're actually doing, yeah. they're actually doing fine. Yeah. Uh, they're doing fine since they come out. And uh, look, at, we're just glad to be able to take them in. Hungry monsters, aren't they? I think people, when they're in trouble, they need, they need that sort of help. And unfortunately, as a flood like this, maybe, if there's one good thing that has brought out, has been the community spirit. The worry would be here that if it rises another three or four inches, am I going to be the next uh, block of land that's going to be taken? Or, you know, it's going to involve maybe more people than, than it is already. And the fear is going forward that this, this could be uh, the future for the likes of me as well. There are people who say that this is the new normal. We've got to just let this happen. We can't let this happen here or, or farming along the banks of the Shannon uh, will disappear for everyone, including myself.
part of what we're seeing today is because of climate change. We know that the storms like Storm Desmond are 40% more likely to happen now because of climate change than they were before. Another part of it is bad planning and, and where we site new developments and how we manage our waters. So it's a combination of both. The Shannon has been flooding for thousands of years, but some farmers are convinced that a lack of maintenance is one of the main causes of the rise in levels. There's silt and debris in the Shannon, and it needs to be taken over. And that will solve my problem and all the town's problems as well. And do you think that's likely to happen? Um, it has to happen, or we're in for this problem again next year and the year after and the year after. It's fairly obvious to any of us that's in, that's in the farming business. If we don't maintain our own drains, we'll be in trouble, and the main drain through the country is not being maintained. Dredging doesn't work. Uh, we have to repeatedly do dredging in order to make it useful. Uh, so you have to go back again and again and keep dredging. And what you end up doing is causing the water to move faster. So while you might save that one piece of area that you've dredged, now you've created a bigger problem further downstream. So dredging is an ineffective solution and it's also damaging to our ecology. The reality is that if you want to deal with silt, you've got to deal with it at the source, not down at the bottom. So dredging may work initially to clear it out, but you need to go to where that silt is happening and you need to deal with it there. Uh, at the Shannon, we could get a lot of benefit right now if we just started planting native trees. Native trees have been shown to reduce floodwaters by up to 50%, and that's something we could start today rather than waiting for dredging to happen, which it hasn't happened yet. While the government has agreed to compensate farmers for lost fodder and buying extra winter feed for their animals, the long-term costs for farmers in the Shannon Basin are much higher. Financially, has this been a huge hit? Yeah figure on it yet. I, I have no clue. Don't even want to think about no, it? No, no. Tens of thousands probably. You're going to have a trickier head. It's you? going to be a tough year, yes, yeah. from a financial point of view. It will be very tough, yes, because we're going to have more expenditure than we ever budgeted for. But the fact that you're not covered means that what you are facing is it's all out of your pocket. It's all, it will be, yeah. It'll take years to, to recover from this financially, yes. You're very weary with all this, aren't you? Yes, yes. Are you angry? Absolutely. Like, this is a disgrace in this day and age that this is happening after 09, happening again now. Who are you angry with? I'm angry with the government and, and all the bodies involved in the Shannon. ESB, OPW, Board of Works, every one of them, they all have a part to play in it. The bottom line is go back and start at the basics and clean out the Shannon. Climate change will mean periods of higher rainfall and more winter flooding. So in an area like this, does it make sense to farm here at all? I'm going to try and stay making cows here anyway. I know no different. We were born into a dairy farm and we'll do our best to stay going, yes. There's only so long you can stay battling against it. It's not viable and you can't look into year on, year after this, uh, dealing with the same problem. It's not viable and it's not profitable. Join us after